Learn how one man's enlightenment was found in a boathouse, the statement I made while camping that made me stand alone, and how the wrinkles in your face can bring you renewed energy. Welcome to No Bow Tie, where we conquer emptiness and frustration, discover our uniqueness, and live with relentless joy. I'm John No Bow Tie's Fuboda, author and musician. Today, we're going to talk about the hidden lessons in life and how they sometimes get overlooked because of the challenge. Be sure to subscribe. During the pandemic, when everything was shut down, my wife and I invited some friends to go camping. It was time to socialize again. It was awkward. It was very jarring to, to be face to face with people again, but we did it. We sat around a campfire talking and there wasn't much to talk about, but it got quiet and the sparks were flying up from the fire and we could hear the, the you know, waves crashing on the shore. And about 20 minutes went by where we were just all kind of staring into the darkness and enjoying the fire. I started to reminisce on the lessons I'd learned in the last couple of years. And for some reason, out of my mouth came, this has been the best two years of my life. That really got everybody's attention. Kind of said, huh? I said, when else have we been asked to answer the question, who am I in such a forceful way? How often are we called upon to really decide what makes us happy? And how often are we, let, are we faced with an emptiness that we have to fill without just entertainment and the, you know, the general things that fill that void? We had to really discover who we are. And they agree, and they said, well, I never want to learn it again. <laughs> yes, I would agree, too. But for you, when you have a challenge in your life, afterward, do you reminisce on the lesson that was learned? Because you can find strength in that lesson that will carry you forward. If you don't, it's a problem because you're going to be just battered down with life challenges, which are not going to stop. It, but if each time that you have a challenge, you learn a lesson and build it to your strength and move forward, that problem is much resolved. And in the future, you will have something that you can hang on to. If not, it is a deep emptiness. It is a feeling of being lost when you don't think that that strength is available to you. And a good starting base is to know who you are, to be able to answer the question, who am I? But who can really just answer it? Who can just point blank say, this is who I am and describe it? It's more of a lifestyle. It's an ongoing thing. You're in motion in life. I was down at a cabin where I go to write. It's a hunting cabin. There's nothing to do. You can go for a walk on a gravel road and that's about it. I had kind of a brain lock. And I wasn't getting anything done, and it was getting frustrating. And as the evening went on, I decided to call it quits, and I'd start fresh in the morning. And I went into the bathroom, I washed my hands, and I looked up, and there I was in the mirror, and I was looking straight into my eyes, and my attention went right to my pupils. And I just stared, and I stared. And all of a sudden, an amazing thing happened. The peripheral around my eyes, my face, my cheeks, and all of the surrounding area became distorted and just kind of disappeared, almost like turning into a puddle of water. And then I realized I was having fun. And I, I smiled. And when I did, I saw myself. And I stood back and I said, I'll never forget, I said, oh, there you are. And I continued to stare. And when I did, all of the wrinkles in my face exposed themselves. Every single line in my face had a story connected to it. And my smile, I, I, my smile made me laugh. And I just, by the time I was done, I felt a deep connection to who I am without being able to have the words. I went in and I sat down and I wrote at the computer like I had never written before. Now, the question I have for you is, do you lose yourself so much that you fill the void with small activities that are shallow? 
scrolling on a phone, video games, turning on the TV to watch something, texting for, with no particular interest. Do you take time to really know what you are about and how you're using it in that day? If you don't, eventually you will have an empty void. And the human tendency is to fill that void with something that is quick fix. And quick fix is not going to cut it. Quick fix is going to leave you frustrated. It's going to leave you wondering who you are. It's going to leave you wondering how you are connected with yourself. And that emptiness then again is filled up with another shallow quick fix. And before long, that builds so many layers that you'll forget who you are. You'll forget the essence of your core. How wonderful it feels to be connected to yourself, to look in the mirror and know who you are. That reminds me of a guy that I met years ago, 25 years ago. I was on my honeymoon. My wife and I were in Northern California. It's not very populated. There's a lot of rolling hills and grasslands. And we got an Airbnb right on the ocean outside of a little town in the country. The first night that we got there, I went for a walk along the beach and I thought I was alone. And all of a sudden, this guy just appeared next to me and he didn't even say hi. He said, I'm Tony. And apparently Tony owned the place and he put five or six houseboats and he turned them into Airbnbs stationed on the hillsides. But these things were ornate with art. He took so much love and care into each one of these to make them individual and very creative and a, and a blast to stay in. They were just wonderful, very secluded. And I asked him how he got his start. He said, well, when I bought this land, I came down on this beach and I went to that spot over there and he pointed to a spot. He said, you see that rock that's half in the water? I said, yeah. He said, I went down there. And I drew a circle in the sand, and I was going to go in that circle until I found complete enlightenment and really discovered who I am at my core, at my center. And then he went on to talk about a 57 Chevy that he was fixing. I said, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, you changed the subject. What happened? What happened when, you know, did you find it? And he goes, oh. It lasted about 10 minutes. He said, I, f I very quickly figured out that's not how it's done. I got out of that circle and I got busy. I started drawing plans and blueprints for the future. He said, right away, I knew what needed to be done. And he, he described how his confidence level went up. And then he looked at me and he said, you don't get it done by hoping. You get self-actualization done by self-involvement of your dreams. And Bam, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And then he went on to describe how one little thing at a time put the bricks in place for building the big sturdiness of his vision. And of course, he failed many times and learned and failed and learned and failed, but he finished it and he got that thing out there. I ask you, do you hope that your life comes together? Do you spend more time envying what you want in the world? hoping that your dopamine, dopamine levels will stay high because of the entertainment of the world? Or do you get involved in what you want one little thing at a time? Do you make a list of what you want in your life? Or do you make a to-do list of what you want to finish in a day? Think of what you want in your life, break it down in weeks, and then start Begin to work on your life by working on your dreams, your visions. And they're going to change as time goes on. You're going to change those dreams and visions. Go with it. You're gathering and developing the skill of being able to see and complete your future. You can take the challenges and take the strength from those challenges and move them forward. You also know that you've got to spend time with yourself to know when you're learning the most about yourself. And most importantly, start, take action on those things that you want in life. Now, we're running out of time, but next week, next week, we're going to talk in depth about how to form those visions and how to pull out of you 
the creative dream that you want, the things that you want most in life, and get a starting point on it. So go to nobowtie.com slash show and be the first to get that episode. It's going to be very exciting. I'm going to leave you with a little accomplishment of my, my own that started with nothing. It's from a ballet by Manuel de Falla. And I took that ballet and I pulled a piece out of it and I did it in my own style. I hope that you enjoy it too.